We're back. Welcome to Truth Worth Living, where we seek to understand God's Word so we can live in God's will. For those of you who are from the Clearwater area, do you guys remember when P.F. Chang's opened? It, they opened at the Countryside Mall. And, and if you remember correctly, you couldn't pry your way in there with a crowbar. But, but at the time, we didn't know that. So for Mother's Day and for my birthday that year, right after they opened, we decided to take our entire family there for dinner. We arrived before 6, thinking we would beat the rush. And they told us it would be a little bit. We waited until 6.45. And then it was 7.15. And I think we went to Dick's Sporting Goods and it was 7.45. And then finally we were seated at 8.15. That, that, was, that was 10 years ago and it is still burned into my memory. Now the, the question is, why did we wait? Well, it's, it's a great question that I frankly don't have a good answer for. But I think at some point we said, well, we've waited this long why should we quit now? And and we didn't. And we paid for it. But this this happens, right? Sometimes you, you just have so much skin in the game that you refuse to give up. But I, I can tell you we thought about it. We talked about it. We, we really almost quit. And looking back, <laughs> I think we should have because four small kids in a two-hour and 20-minute wait was stupid right it was just stupid we 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 should have quit the fact is that there are times when you should quit and there are times when you should persevere when when you're suffering it's hard to know what's right the the hebrew believers were about to quit they were suffering in their faith for Christ. And as the writer closes out chapter 10, he's exhorting them to stay the course. His argument is essentially the one we landed on. You've come this far and there's too much at stake. Look at Hebrews chapter 10 beginning in verse 32. Remember those earlier days after you had received the light when you endured in a great conflict full of suffering? Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times, you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So don't throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And, but my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Now, his argument is essentially this, and he's right. Why quit now? That they had come so far and suffered so much. So why, why would they drop out of the race so close to the finish line? He, he believes they will... They'll stick with it if they just remember their suffering, what following Jesus brought them and what it cost them. When they first came to Christ, they were tested with great suffering. They, they were anathema in their Jewish community, cursed. And so they had to break from their family, their friends, and their traditions to embrace Jesus as the Messiah. And he encapsulates their suffering in verses 33 and 34. Listen to what he says. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times, you stood side by side those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property. Think about that. All their stuff was taken away from them. Why? Because you knew that you yourselves 
had better and lasting possessions. Now, what he's saying is part of the suffering was direct and part of it was indirect whether they suffered directly by, through persecution and the confiscation of their property, or it was their brother and sister that suffered, they were in it together, standing side by side for the gospel. That's one of the benefits of, of the Christian community, right? It possesses a sympathizing spirit that rallies around its own, representing the hands and feet of Jesus. Th these believers experienced that, and many of them actually made it happen. It was, it was in their unity of purpose with faith in God's promises that, that enabled them to persevere in those initial trials. Yes, their possessions were taken, but they were living for something greater that couldn't be found in this world. Now, with God, there was assurance of better stuff, a better life, a better estate, better society, better hearts, better bodies, better work, and true liberty. In essence, the promise of God in Christ was for a better everything, and initially, when they connected with Christ, they were all in. So in verse 36, he says, you need to go back to that. And I quote, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. You'll get what you were pursuing from the beginning because of their faith. Think about this. They had already lost everything. Now they wanted to go back. Why would they quit now? Quitting would mean they would lose God's promises too. So in essence... They would lose what they had, and they were certain to lose what they were hoping for. Perseverance, he's saying, in the faith pays off, but it requires patience. To help them with patience, he reaches back into the Old Testament to assure them, first in verse 37, in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. His first assurance to them is that Christ, the victor, is coming back. While there's no guarantee that it's going to happen in their lifetime, it is a guarantee he's coming back. And even if it doesn't happen before they die, they would see him face to face and enter the hope of his victory. It was assured. Second thing he assures them of is that God takes great delight in his persevering saints. Verse 38 says, But my righteous one will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. Verse 39, But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Well, what's he saying? Those who are righteous, who live with a heart for God in clinging to their faith, or those are those who persevere through tough times, and God's response to them is delight. But on the other hand, if they quit, God takes no pleasure in them. He says, actually, God takes no pleasure in those who shrink back. Why? Because they didn't really believe. Okay, they weren't a part of the band of brothers who had given their heart, soul, and mind to Jesus Christ. They were just those who were associated with the faith. And what he says is, they will be destroyed. But those who have the witness of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit of patience, and they choose to persevere, that group will be saved and will enjoy all the promises that God delivers to his children. Now that's truth worth knowing, and it's certainly truth worth living. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I look forward tomorrow night we're going to start our Bible study in the book of Philippians, and then on Sunday we're going to start a great series on the life of Abraham. So I'm looking forward to seeing you with a message from God on my heart in both of those studies. Have a great day.